Welcome to Outright TV, a video podcast series bringing you stories of LGBTIQ people and allies across the globe. I'm Elise, Director of Corporate Engagement at Outright Action International. And in today's episode, I am talking to Kenneth Kwok, founder and CEO of Global Citizens Capital and the Better Together Foundation in Hong Kong. Kenneth is also community developer at SHK Group and the founder and co-president of Asia World Anti-Aging and Wellbeing Association. Welcome to Outright TV, Kenneth. You are a person wearing many hats, which we'll get into briefly, but I have left, have I left anything out of my introduction of you that you would like to share? For example, the languages you speak? Hello. Well, first of all, Elise, thank you so much for having me. And yes, I'm Kenneth and I speak Mandarin, English, Cantonese, and on peu, a bit of French. That is so impressive. I wish we could do this interview in multiple languages. We'll keep it to English and maybe have a surprise later on. Um, Kenneth, let, let's jump into this, um, this, this dialogue. I'm excited to talk to you uh, and welcome again. When I met you, I was really struck at the diversity of your experience and work. You told me about your day job, your night job, and your passion job. Can you share some insight into this frame of reference and how you describe yourself in your work? Sure. Well, first of all, I want to let everyone know that having three jobs, it's kind of normal these days under COVID-19 situation. Um, my day job is I run an impact investment venture uh, focused on health and well-being, innovation, as well as community development. My night job is I educate and I mentor a lot of startups on sustainability and impact. And my passion job, clearly, I don't frankly call it a job anymore. It's just something which I wake up, I go to bed thinking, dreaming, and wanting. And clearly that's diversity, inclusion, and financial and social justice for all. So, Within these three so-called triangular approaches, I try to live as human being as possible while doing a little bit of social good every day. That's such a fantastic combination. Um, it, is, it is wonderful when you can show up and love what you do because it certainly doesn't feel like work when you're able to do that. And, you know, it seems like you have your your fingers in all of the right places in order to be uh, a, a, an advocate for social change. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. Um, you, you, told me, you told me in one of our first conversations about the circular economic approach to advancing LGBTI equality and empowerment. What does that mean? Um, and, and how do you apply it in, 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 your, in your work on behalf uh, of the community? That, I think, I always like to reference a very simple point that no one is alone in this world. When I came out as a first year analyst at UBS uh, back in the day, because I'm not going to reveal my age, um, it was daunting. I was the first out gay person, I think, in investment banking in Hong Kong. <laughs> I was knocking on doors as like, where's the ERG? I'm sorry. Like, where's the support that I need as an out individual, right? And after 10 years of the corporate world, I decided, you know what? It's time maybe I take what I learned and create my own ecosystem. And I had a wonderful mentor. So none of the ideas, frankly, I did was frankly my ideas. I was just able to integrate. And the one thing I'll never forget is, if you want to lead by example, you need to create something where you can generate profit while still looking after people and planet. That was my first introduction to the three Ps. Now I know it's the three Ps. Back then I was like, say what? Um, so I did something, I guess, a bit different. I started a impact venture. I started my own nonprofit and I started my own business association. <laughs> hey, you got to cover all three. So again, it sounds huge, but no, you just have to start small and 
five years now, it grew a little bit. So, and everything I do covers all three and virtuous cycle 101. So that's pretty much it. That's so interesting. Um, we hear a lot these days about purpose-driven companies and purpose-driven leadership. And it seems like you're not only talking the talk, but walking the walk. Um, it's exciting. It's exciting to see concrete examples and hear concrete stories about how this is being put into practice. Um, and, and I find it remarkable um, when you say that, you know, you felt at one point um, when you came out at UBS that you were the only gay person in Hong Kong. Um, you know, I, I, to go from that to your involvement with um, LGBTIQ uh, advancement in Asia through Asia Pride um, seems like just a remarkable journey. Um, can you tell us um, what Asia Pride does and why it's so important and how people can learn more about it? Well, that is always my favorite topic of any webinar because people sometimes forget Asia. It's you know, covers a lot of geography, covers a lot of cultures, languages, and most importantly, we have a very wide spectrum in terms of equality and equity across Asia. On one hand, you have countries like Taiwan, which have legalized same-sex marriage. They just recently celebrated their first military same-sex marriage endorsed by the government, like happy tears to all of us. And then unfortunately, this is me giving the stern look, or I try my best. Countries such as Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, Brunei, which frankly do everything in their powers to make a living hell for LGBTI individuals. So when we talk about Asia Pride, I like to reference my current participation in Interpride. Um, I serve on the Global Advisory Council representing Region 19. And every day, we do a very fun exercise. We try to find a new organization within our 26 member countries to see who we have left out and what we can do for them. Mm -hmm. And over a short period of seven months, we got new members from countries we didn't even know exist that had an LGBTI movement. Or frankly, like in Bangladesh, it's very underground or it's named something differently. Uh, but, you know, we adapted. Interpride in the beginning was like, well, we have to be pride organizations. I'm like, well, you got to locally, there are a lot of countries who don't have that mandate. So let's make it community building. So we actually changed some of the rules and charters, and now we have a lot more participation. So in a nutshell, I think my dream vision of Asia Pride is that we have just that one connector in each of the 25, 26 states, including the Pacific Islands, so that when we do something meaningful, it literally filters through and more importantly, make the perspective of every country count. That to me is real inclusion. That's a great answer. Um, you know, what, what speaks to me in what you're saying is that we have a responsibility in the LGBTI community to lift up and prioritize and center those of us that um, either do, do not live with privilege or have a hard time accessing the community itself um, and, and to make sure that our own movement is inclusive. Um, so that's, that's wonderful. How can people learn more about Asia Pride? I will be very happy to share a few links, uh, but most importantly for Asia Pride for me is about awareness. There is currently racism and oppression happening all around the world, including in Asia. If you want to help, just be a bit more aware of what's going on in terms of LGBT rights, because frankly, sometimes I do see the fight for true equity as dominoes. It takes a culmination of a certain so-called mass for things to really tilt our way on a global basis. So next time, check in and see what's going on and learn something like we are doing every day with other countries around the world. And with knowledge comes power and with power comes momentum. Extremely wise words, uh, very good advice. And, and that brings me to my next question just beautifully and seamlessly. Um, one of my favorite questions to ask anyone really is if you had a chance to speak to your 25 year old self, what advice would you give and what are your thoughts? Well, this is a 
very personal question to me as well. Um, and if I may, can I go bilingual just quickly? Oh, um, we would love that. We would love that. Um, this is a shout out to my friends in China. Um, 大家好,我是Kenneth。大家也知道最近在中国发生了很多一些不太愉快的事情,包括上海的骄傲节,现在被取消了。然后,总体上,整个国家对同性恋或者公平与对待还是存在很大的差异。我希望大家不要把希望或
I hope we can take what we learned and really pull it together so that we form a community of resources globally that for any 12 year old LGBTI dreamer that wants to make a change and make a difference, they can make reference to, learn from, and more importantly, take advantage of our combined knowledge. So one of the, my things that I do is something called Startup Your Pride where I distill a lot of startup so-called know-how and I put them in many different languages and I do sometimes, you know, speaking tours in various countries and organizations just to tell basically, hey, you got an idea? Well, how about following these five simple steps to see whether it could be viable? And that's what I do, frankly, as my day job anyway. So I'm just taking what I learned and hopefully make it much easier for the next generation to achieve impact and shorten the amount of time and the obstacles that they have to face. So yes, that would be my call to action. And I look very much forward to collaborating with many other members of the outright community. Well, thank you. Thank you for your encouragement. Um, what a wonderful way to end. Uh, I, I, I think you, are correct that we need to continue to build this global movement and build it intersectionally and build coalitions and empower new leaders in the movement to emerge and begin to um, identify a path forward to lift, to lift us um, and to embolden us. Kenneth, it's been, it's been fun. I wish it wasn't over. Um, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today for Outright TV. Um, we will certainly invite you back again soon, and uh, you keep doing the phenomenal work that you're doing, and, and obviously consider Outright a partner to you, and we will do the same. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone at Outright. Keep it up, and happy to support always. Love you all.